James Wood. This rapping mean um chinks 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 drugs i believe his name that's his name is yeah man yeah i already i already got you know killed in queens and shit rest in peace uh, um he rest in peace with chinks bro like, it's been like what eight years since he passed yeah rest in peace so <coughs> rest in peace to bro the rapper on the cusp of stardom but right before his rap career was about to take off his life was tragically cut short his brutal murder hit the headlines but his rise to success was also worth noting chinks was born in queens new york in 1983 and lived through the golden age of hip-hop throughout his teen years and listened to artists such as jay-z wu-tang tupac and nwa however it was a rapper from queens that switched him from a hip-hop fan to a budding hip-hop artist he told double xl about the first time he heard nas matic one of my my uncles left his Walkman at my house in the projects one day and I picked it up, listened to it, and I felt like this was the first time I listened to hip hop with curses in it. Illmatic was definitely one for me that made me want to get involved in music. In another interview he said that he was a natural performer. I started rapping at the table in junior high school for fun with the homies and by ninth grade is when I started taking music seriously. However, his neighborhood of Far Rockaway in Queens was not an easy place to grow up in and he got into drug dealing at an early age. That being said, he was using his money to support his potential music career. At that point is when I started investing my street money into my studio time and finding my sound. As a teenager, he was nicknamed Chinks, which has no connection to the racial slur. He was also initially called Chinks Drugs. During these early years, he formed a friendship with another aspiring rapper named Stack Bundles, and together they created the Riot Squad. Both rappers were gaining momentum, but this was cut short in 2005 when Chinks was arrested for robbery and drug charges. On top of that, this arrest was just a month after Chinks' father passed away. Even though Chinks was sentenced to five years, Stack Bundles was adamant that he would have a rap career of his own and Chink's Drugs would join him once he got out. Stack Bundles continued to build his own music career and reg- Um, rest in peace of Stack Bundles too, bro. You know, I heard, I heard a couple, some, some of his, um, his music, bro. And no funny shit, those, some of his shits is nice. I ain't gonna lie. Son, nice. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Rest in peace to, um, Stack Bundles, bro. Too, bro, that ass. Shouted out chicks in his music. Despite his friend promising him that there was light at the end of the tunnel, prison was still prison. He was pretty downbeat one day and got a sudden call from his grandmother. She broke the news that Stag Bundles, his best friend, and a man on the cusp of stardom had been killed. Stag Bundles was senselessly shot in the lobby of the building he lived in in Far Rockaway. The death of his friend reminded him how fragile life could be and how he needed to make the best use of his time while he was here. Upon his release from jail, he focused intensely on music. When he finally got out of prison in 2009, Chinks was determined to get his music career back on track. Max B, who he only knew through Stack Bundles, helped him to get started making music together, and a friend of Max B was French Montana. French recalls first meeting Chinks. I met Chinks in Yonkers. He used to come around the studio. He was mad, humble, quiet, and he used to sit there and observe. Then I started hearing his music, and I'm like, oh, he got something. French is not afraid to admit that he thought Chinks was better than him, because he's seen all of my mistakes. Chinks soon joined French Montana's Coke Boys group. After prison, Chinks didn't really wait around to release music. In April 2009, he dropped his first solo mixtape, Hurry Up and Die. Which yeah, I remember that song they did, bro. Together, French, Frenchie, and um, Chinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking cold boy. I'm a fucking cold boy. That song is fire, bro. That song is dead heat, bro. It's fire, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Turned into a mixtape series with volumes 2 and 3 dropping in 2010. A year later, he got the chance to work with Harry Fraud, who was then mostly known for working with French Montana, but has since worked with many people like Mac Miller, Wiz Khalifa, Pusha T, and others. Harry Fraud produced Chinks' entire mixtape flight. By 2012, Chinks' track I'm a Coke Boy made major waves. Meanwhile, French Montana's career was really taking off and even appeared on the 2012 XXL freshman cover. And it was assumed that the rise would also shine a light on other Coke Boys members. In January 2013, Funkmaster Flex released a remix of the track I'm a Coke Boy on Hot 97 with verses from Rick Ross and Diddy. Later that year, Chinks released an EP named I'll Take It From Here, which contained another single called Feelings. An important thing to note is that Chinks turned 30 years old in 2013, and his career was only now getting off the ground. While there are a lot of negatives to the story, the positive angle from this is that Chinks continued to work long and many years at his craft and didn't really get on until 30. Despite his somewhat yeah. violent lyrics, Chinks was not living the lifestyle he- That's good, that's, that's still, that's still kinda young, you know?
30 years old, that's, that's not old, that's still kind of young. He just entered his 30s, like... Portrayed in his music anymore and was simply a family man with kids. When describing his job to his children, he said that his music was no different than gangster movies and was pure fiction. In a Hot 97 interview, he said that he explained to them, What dad's doing is nothing different than what you see in the movies. This is a movie with no picture. I'm just talking about it. This is not real. Hot off his success, he changed his name from Chinks Drugs to simply Chinks. He was on the cusp of stardom and altered his name to something more palatable to a mainstream audience. In an interview with Hot 97, he said, Pepsi's not going to do anything with Chink's drugs. He had almost finished his album, Welcome to JFK, and was performing before thousands of fans. For most aspiring rappers, his life couldn't have gotten much better, but this would all change on May 17th, 2015. That night, Chink's was performing a concert in Brooklyn, and after the show, he headed back to Queens with his friend Antar El Ziadi. They drove to a hookah bar that night, but it was closed, so they decided to call it. Chinks was driving his Porsche in Queens Boulevard and was stopped at a red light. Suddenly, a car pulled up alongside him. Chinks was suddenly shot at least eight times. However, he managed to drive his car away from the other vehicle and towards a Dunkin' Donuts. Then the other car fled the scene. He was taken to Jamaica Hospital Medical Center, but was later pronounced dead. Thankfully, Chinks' friend Al Ziadi was in a stable condition by Sunday. He had miraculously recovered, but at the same time, he had lost a friend. Because more shots were fired at Chinks, he was believed to be the main target. His death was mourned by pretty much most sides of the hip-hop community, especially within New York. Tributes were paid to him from not only the Migos, but Talib Kweli, Mac Miller, and Jay-Z, as well as French Montana, who said, The devil comes in all shapes and sizes, and he's ruthless. Life here is temporary. They will kill you for this lifestyle, if they can't afford it. Jealousy is a mother effort. There was a similar sense of anger from Chinks' manager, Biggs. He said, It's just so disappointing for hip-hop to hear this story too many times and to have to turn to a mother or a wife or to look at his son and his kids. It's just certain answers you don't have. Whatever effect this had on the hip-hop community, Chinks was also a husband and father to three children, with another one on the way. His friends were devastated by his loss, but they found it very therapeutic to help finish Chinks' album, Welcome to JFK, and carry on their late friend's dream of having his own album out there. This would also provide some much-needed funds for his family as well. So in August of that same year, Welcome to JFK was finally released. It was a bittersweet moment. An album was released, but by someone who was no longer with us. Another poignant note is on the second track, Far Rock, which contained a feature from Stack Bundles. A review on Pitchfork said, Welcome to JFK is a different kind of hip-hop debit. Instead of pointing the rapper towards the places he could go, JFK hints at places he might have gone. Before his death, Chinks was also being considered for the XXL freshman list. And because of their similar style, you could argue that he could be just as big, if not bigger, than French Montana. French has since said, man, if Chinks was alive, Chinks would be top five. The horrifying real- Do y'all think that? Do y'all think if Chinks would've, Chinks would've been alive today, like, if he was still here in this RV, would y'all, would y'all think he would still be alive? I mean, not, he, would y'all think he would be top five, top ten? Let me know. That both Chinks and Stack Bundles were killed just before they had achieved their dreams. In September 2016, another album was released and aptly titled Legends Never Die. This wasn't as successful as Welcome to JFK, but provided Chinks' fans with whatever usable material was left and generated more funds for his family. But while these new albums were coming out, the question on everyone's mind was who the perpetrator was. Chinks may have rapped about living a troubled life, but he said that was fiction and that he had put those days behind him. The mystery of Chinks' murder was unimaginably tough on his family. Chinks' mother has said that she approached French Montana at Chinks' funeral and said, why did y'all do that to my child? To which French reportedly responded, because he wouldn't listen. A lot has been made about that comment from French, but in 2017, the mystery of Chinks' murder was finally solved. An NYPD official exclusively told XXL that his murder came from a conflict which originated 10 years earlier, while Chinks was incarcerated. He got into a fight with Quincy Omri, who was also an aspiring rapper named Quality. Richard Rudolph, commanding officer of the Queen's South Homicide Squad, told the XXL, we're not exactly sure what the fight was about, but our perpetrator Quincy probably got the worst of it and he wanted to get back at Chinks. He added, when he saw Chinks' career starting to blow, he took it real personal and figured that his own career was going south. It just festered inside of him. When Chinks performed at Sound Garden Hall in Philadelphia on April 24, 2015. Sounds sound like jealousy to me, bro. That sounds like jealousy. 
Quality had turned up, and because Chinks was now a touring rapper, he now knew the exact location of where his enemy was. Jamar Hill, who took part in the whole execution of Chinks, but there's only one shooter and that's Quincy, they were just waiting for an opportunity. The NYPD were pleased that they had found the murderer, but this obviously only minorly helps ease the pain for his family and friends. It doesn't help that Chinks' baby is without a father, and Chinks' mom is still without a son, and Chinks' wife is still a widow. We can only do what we can do, so I'm happy that they have some closure in this. In Far Rockaway, there was a mural of two of its greatest hip-hop artists, Chinks and Stag Bundles, also two friends. Both of these artists never got to fully realize their success, but this mural will hopefully inspire others in the neighborhood. Okay, that's the vid, bro. Um, yeah, bro, look. Yeah, rest in peace to, um, Chinks Drugs, or Chinks, what I think you guys like to call him. Um, so yeah, bro, make sure y'all, um, nah, like, Comment down below what is your favorite Chinks, Chinks song, bro. I want to know. Comment down below what is your favorite Chinks song, bro. Like I said, rest in peace to um, rest in peace to Chinks. Yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibe. You will not be forgotten, Chinks. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking too much. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. We're just checking out you are.